Greetings, students, and welcome to this special edition of the Professor Travel Domestic Edition. I am your host, the Professor Travel, coming to you from Orange County, California. This is the website, the blog, and the podcast that you come to in order to learn more about different travel destinations. This is hopefully going to inspire and, dis and, and promote discussion amongst the community. Hopefully, this will also get you to travel more and enjoy life more. Now, you can reach me on a variety of different social media links, but by all means, find me at my website at theprofessortravel.com. Um, you can also find me on both YouTube and Facebook at The Professor Travel. I'm now available on TikTok at The Professor Travel. You can find me on Instagram at the underscore professor underscore travel. If you're a Twitter, Twitter -er, I guess it would be the proper term. Uh, you can find me there at the professor tr1. And then if you're a blogger, please go and find me on Blogspot at the professor travel.blogspot.com. Today, I am having one of my visiting professors revisit us, Chad Sweeney, or should I say Dr. Chad Sweeney. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us on this special edition of the Professor Travel. Um, for those who, for whatever reason, did not have an opportunity to review your previous videos, can you give us a quick rundown of some of your educational background? And then on the other hand, also some travel destinations that you've been to? Yeah, for sure. So I um, work as a training and learning director for a technology company, and I work in technology for the last 15 years or so. And um, I have, uh, as you point out, I do have a doctorate in uh, educational technology. So that's, um, yeah, that's uh, something that I guess I, can I toss around sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty rarely though. Um, yeah, I'll, and, I'll toss it around for you because I'm very proud of you for having achieved that. So congratulations to you on that. Thanks. Um, and then, yeah, in terms of travel, I um, travel around 200,000 miles a year. I uh, kind of, you know, I enjoy traveling for the sake of traveling. So I love airplanes, I love hotels, I love trying new things, and I uh, there's not very much I wouldn't do when it comes to travel. And you've done, you've done at least three interviews with me previously. I know one I think was on Abu Dhabi. I know another one was on India. And then we did a special one where we talked about planes and air, uh, airlines, different types of stuff that was going on with that. He's quite the expert in that. So students, I encourage you to go back to some of the previous content in order to be able to look at that. But today we're going to dissect a little bit more state by state as far as the domestic edition of this show. We're going to talk about the state of Washington, which is where you reside. Um, so talk to me a little bit about the history of Washington, what you're aware of and what we can talk about. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I, I live in Washington. I've lived here for about 10 years. And uh, Washington is um, its a beautiful, beautiful place, probably the most beautiful place I've ever lived. Um, so I, I, I love it here. Um, yeah, in term, so in terms of history, as uh, with the rest of this continent, um, it was originally inhabited by uh, indig indigenous uh, Native American tribes. And then in, um, in the 18, uh, 1850s ish, um, it, there started to be a lot of development, especially on the, um, the west side of the state. So there were um, expeditions that uh, sailed down through the, um, through the Puget Sound, which is our main waterway here, and um, started relationships with the local Native American tribes. So that's like the really, really old, old history. Um, but uh, the state of Washington then uh, became a state in the, the latter part of the 19th century. Um, and I think, I think some interesting things about our history, especially in the early, uh, well, I guess the late 19th century, um, Seattle was the main um, starting point during the Yukon and Klondike uh, gold rushes. So Seattle was sort of the last industrialized city as you were to go north uh, in the U.S. or Canada. So people would take a, a train here and then would load up and take a ship from here to wherever the gold fields were. So that was kind of how Seattle had its first big boom was uh, outfitting people uh, who were going up for the gold rush. And then um, there, were, there was also some really interesting times 
uh, Seattle industrialized uh, during the early uh, 20th century, um, there, there was a lot of industrialization and a lot of labor activism. So uh, Seattle actually is one of the few cities in the United States that has had a multi-day general strike. So the city actually shut down, labor union shut down the, the, um, the whole city for five days in 1990. Wow. So yeah, it was uh, very, very fascinating. Um, so that's, um, and I think uh, in like, when you think about World War II, um, a lot of the, um, the aircraft bombers were designed and built here by Boeing. Mm -hmm. And so that's uh, one. That's kind of the next big industry here was the aerospace industry. So going uh, kind of that 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 sort of brought Washington on the map. And then um, we had a World's Fair here in 1962, and that was when the Space Needle was built. Yep. Uh, uh, a nice reminder of that. And then um, I think Seattle kind of is famous for its riot because uh, when I think of other very historic events. The 1999 um, WTO protests. So the World Trade Organization uh, was having their like annual big meeting here, and this there were massive uh, protests. The the downtown you know was like was kind of basically destroyed by protesters. So that that was kind of the, there's a long history of radical politics in Seattle and. I think that's that's one thing that sticks out in my mind. Yeah, and you know, a couple of the latter uh, latter twentieth century things that like resonate with me that I can remember in terms of Seattle. Uh, number one, obviously, I'm a product of the '80s and '90s, so I mean, you know, listening to grunge music was a huge thing yeah. back in the day, and so that was, you know, you get some of the some of the biggest grunge bands that were permeating. But we'll talk about that when we get to arts as well in just a second. Apart from that, um, we were also looking in terms of, uh, you know, other things that were going on at that time. Um, and then, of course, oh gosh, a few other things that were that were happening during that period. So, I mean, there's there's lots of different things that were going on. Um, I'm trying to think in terms of other things like, um, you know, uh, Seattle. Uh, uh, oh, gosh. Um, I remember we were doing training booklets and training uh, things on, um, you know, the Seattle Pike Place Fish Market. And... Um, different types of training stuff that was going on at that point. So yeah, lots of different things, really kind of cool. And we moved on to things like geography in the area, which is beautiful and it's very colorful. And, um, you know, talk to me a little bit about that. You alluded to it a little bit. Yeah. Um, yep. So uh, Washington is the, uh, in the Northwest of the um, contiguous uh, U S so right there at the Northwest um, it's surrounded. So on the South by Oregon on the East, by Idaho and then on the north by British Columbia. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, and then the state is very uh, geographically uh, divided. So there's the Cascade Mountain Range that goes uh, kind of not through, through the exact middle, but goes uh, right through the state. And so, yeah. um, so that there's a huge change in geography from the part of the state that's west of the mountains and the, uh, the part of the state that's the yeah, just like specifically divided in half where you have one set that's a little bit more urban and lush, and then the other half is like almost desert community, it seems like. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so the climates are, are totally different, um, just like you described. Yeah, the eastern half is very dry, high desert type climate, and then the west, western part is very lush and green. Um, so, yeah, it's very different. Yeah. Um, by the way, where does Mount St. Helens fall in that area? Is it is it just in, in the mountain range itself, or? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's in uh, it's part of the Cascades, um, but it's it's uh, kind of in the southern part of the state. Okay. So, cool. Yeah. So weather wise, mm -hmm. um, diverse weather depending upon which side of the mountains you're on, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's true. I mean, uh, so if you look at so if you go to the west side of the mountains where uh, the climate's more mild, mm -hmm. um, so you think you'll see uh, like summer highs in the 70s. Mm. And then in the winter, the lows are generally in the 30s and 40s. 
Okay, that's actually so, not that bad. I was always of the impression it was much worse than that. Yeah, no, Seattle has very, very mild winters and very mild summers, which is which is nice. So most, you know, most people who live here don't have air conditioning um, wow. at, at all because it's just uh, it, now it, it's been getting warmer, but it's still, you know, it's still more more common to not have air conditioning than to have air conditioning to have. Um, and obviously there's extreme climate situations right now, especially with the fires that are going on right in your area. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, um, you know, in the, on the Eastern half of, of the state, um, because it has that drier weather and they have, you know, it's, it's much hotter. So it's in the nineties in the summer. And then it also gets colder in the winter. Yeah. So it, they'll, they'll have a um, pretty strong winter weather there, but yeah, because it is so dry, um, there are, we do have wildfires that usually happen during this, during this part of the year, um, on the east side. Any other, like, ser like any serious flooding or anything kind of crazy? Um, no, not really. Not that, no, we do have, uh, the one thing that's a problem on this side of the mountains is mudslides. Mm. So we've had a couple of really tragic, um, mudslides just because, uh, you know, it's a very, hilly and mountainous area and we have a lot of precipitation so okay now let's talk about culture this is yeah. the one thing whenever i'm traveling i'm always interested in a variety of different things and, and for my students that are out there culture can be broken into a variety of different things history being one part of it but you know also looking in terms of religion in the area art language the diet and the food of the area um sports and recreation and of course if there's any holidays in terms of Washington, um, the state, is there a specific predominant religion that that you see more than others in various different places, or is it, or is it pretty much blanketed? Yeah, it's uh, so Washington in general is a pretty irreligious state. So, um, like in terms of non-believers in uh, a faith, it's that's forty-three percent of the state. Wow. So there's, so it's a very, um, I would say it's more of a irreligious, um, an irreligious place. Uh, we do have um, a large variety of different types of, um, diff different types of faiths that we have, um, because we do have a, um, a very broad international community here. So. Yeah. So it's so in one aspect it's pretty universal, but a majority of the individuals that are part of that whole population, it sounds like are irreligious at that point. Yeah. Okay. What about in terms of art? Obviously, I talked about you know the music scene that was in the 1990s. That was a pretty big thing. But there's also a couple of famous artists I think up in that area too. Yeah. So I think the the most famous artist that's associated with Seattle is Gail Chihuly. So he's a really famous glass artist, uh, for example, he did uh, ceiling at the Bellagio. And he did, if you've ever seen a big, pretty blown glass piece, it's odds are it was him or someone copying him. Um, but his, uh, he, he's from here and his studio is here. So you actually, if you go out on, uh, on the lake, you'll canoe or boat or whatever, kayak right past the actual studio where they make his pieces. That's got to be beautiful. Have you, had, yeah. have you ever had an opportunity to do that? Um, so they don't allow you. So I've definitely gone past on the lake, but they don't, they don't allow any visitors there at the studio, but they have um, in the Seattle Center, which is our kind of, uh, where a number of the tourist locations are, um, they have an actual Dale Julie um, museum Oh, so okay. it's a full museum indoor, and it has an outdoor garden area. It's really cool. All so right, cool. Highly recommend thing, that. Good thing to go see. Um, in terms of language, primarily English, not a, not a yeah. lot of uh, French Canadian or anything like that. Like, yeah, I think mostly the first thing to go English, yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. What about in terms of diet and the food in the area? Any major like restaurants that are really super huge? Yeah. Um, so, well, you know, we have, uh, we're kind of famous for the um, Pike Place thick, uh, fish market. So lots of fresh fish that comes in. Again, most of the, um, like most of the Alaskan uh, fishing boats. So like even the ones like from uh, Deadliest Catch, 
those ships are all actually based here. You can actually, again, if you go over to the lake uh, in the off season, you'll see all the boats from that show. Wow. They're all moored here. Uh, so we get a lot of uh, fresh seafood, really famous for oysters. And um, lots of people here, like, will go get their own. Like, you can get permits and do all that. It's pretty cool. And then um, we also have a really strong, um, I would describe as a contemporary cuisine community here. So lots of um, lots of chefs that are trying new and interesting things. Lots of so so there there are a ton of really good modern contemporary type restaurants that I, I really like here. So I think we have a really strong a really strong uh, food culture. So. And we still don't know why coffee is such a big thing in Seattle. It just no. happens to gravitate towards Seattle for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, actually. <laughs> for, for those of my students who are not familiar with this, obviously that's Seattle is, is where Starbucks is located, but they also have Seattle's best coffee, too, or Seattle's famous coffee. So, I mean, you have two major coffee chains that are right there in, C in the Washington area. It's just, it's it's kind of interesting. That's, I mean, it's not like they grow coffee in, in Washington. No, no, definitely not. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm used to like, you know, maybe onions from Walla Walla or something like that, or, uh, you know, uh, but that's about, or apples, but that's about it. That's, that's really yeah. all I can think of. So, um, in terms of sports and recreation, obviously the Seattle Seahawks are a big yep. team. Um, you know, yeah. Seahawks are very, very popular, um, football team. We have the Mariners here. Mariners, yep. And then we just announced that we're, uh, getting an NHL team that's going to be called the Seattle Kraken. That was the the name they decided on. Really? Um, yeah. That's what they settled on. They, okay. Seattle Kraken. Um, and then, uh, of course, since we lost our beloved SuperSonics, um, we have been in a continual struggle here in Seattle to get our uh, to get an NBA team back. Okay. So, but then in terms of other recreation, like you alluded to it earlier, canoeing, outdoors activities, there's sounds yeah. like there's a bunch of them there. Yeah, one of the great things, um, you know, in, so in eastern Washington, lot, uh, you know, there's lots of kind of your sort of desert outdoor type activities, so lots of like tubing and rafting on rivers, that kind of really cool outdoor stuff. And then on, on the west side, you know, we have a huge city that's just, um, you know, 30 minutes away from, you know, from very, you know, from a super high mountain range. So lots of people here do outdoor activities. So, um, yeah, and, and the city is also surrounded by water. So mm -hmm. lots of kayaking, lots of outdoor activities, lots of people with boats and then lots of, you know, hiking, backpacking, that kind of stuff, because we do have those outdoor areas in such close access to us. And to the best of your knowledge, there's no state holidays that are really as pronounced that you're aware of? No, we don't have a, I don't think we have any special state holidays here. Okay, that's fine. We'll have to, apart from your birthday, you know, that's important. <laughs> um, now, the population. Now, Washington hovers around 7.5 to 7.7 .7 million people, if I'm correct? Seven, yep, seven, yeah, 7.5 million. So, yeah, kind of a an, an, an mid-sized state, I guess. Yeah, and you were alluding, and you were alluding earlier that it's split right where the mountain range is in most of the lusher area. Now that's kind of interesting because it seems like a lot of the forested, a lot of the lush area where you would normally expect to have like things like farms and you know uh, more of a rural community is on your side of Washington. But you also have at the same side, you also have the urban yeah. larger cities too. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way before. But yeah, yeah it's, um, I mean, I think um, because there are, there is a lot of, um, there are, there are a lot of waterways that have been dammed for, uh, for irrigation and the kind of, the, the warmer temperatures make it more, uh, I guess, a, a better growing area. Okay. Yeah. Now, in terms of the economy and the various different business, obviously most people know about Microsoft having been there for many years. Amazon's there for many years. Uh, as I talked about earlier, the coffee industry <laughs> is really yeah. kind of crazy in that area. Yeah. Um, what what other uh, large large businesses? You you had mentioned to be before the 
before the show here, uh, Boeing, obviously, they've been there for many, many years. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, Boeing, their legal headquarters, they moved a few years ago, but yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're a substantial business presence here, and then we have a, a huge tech presence with Microsoft, Amazon, and then lots of smaller tech companies are based here, and then um, and lots of the Bay Area tech companies have major outposts here, so we have a huge Google and Facebook presence here as well. So it's like an extension of Silicon Valley in a way. Yeah. Okay, cool. Very neat. Now, you guys are unique in that you have a really, for, for those who live on the East Coast, the West Coast doesn't have a lot of really robust transportation systems. California, surprisingly, does not have a very good transportation system, public transportation system, that is. Um, Oregon's not the most either. But Washington, on the other hand, does have a fairly good transportation corridor and uh, that's met with all kinds of things like um, ferries and buses and trains and light rail i mean can you talk to us a little bit about that yeah for sure um yeah so uh the city like the seattle metropolitan area has excellent public transportation so we have the um we have a, a light rail system and then we have a commuter rail system and then we have um, regional, um, we have regional bus and light rail transit. So yeah, we have what I consider to be um, pretty good public transportation. Again, I think uh, when you when you go out to the east part, eastern part of the state, which is much more rural, there's a lot of transportation issues uh, for people who are living in cities or rural areas there. And then you know, the other interesting thing about the that divide between the two parts of the state is uh, often during the winter um, because you know you have to go through a very high elevation mountain pass to get from one half of the state to the other. There will be times when that pass is shut down for several days at a time, and so you actually can't get from one part of the state to the other, which is really interesting. That must be transporting goods and services very difficult. Yeah, imagine. Yeah. Um, you also have one of the largest airports on the West Coast, which is SeaTac. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, so SeaTac, uh, again, because of our location, um, flying from Seattle to Asia is uh, you know, the sh basically the shortest flight distance from anywhere in the US, mm -hmm. which makes sense to have Seattle as, uh, so it's a hub for Alaska Airlines. It's uh, the home base for Alaska Airlines and hub. And then there's a hub for Delta here as well, which is again, primary focus on feeding their, um, their flights to Asia. If someone was wanting to visit the Washington area for ter for purposes of tourism, yeah. what are some, what are some things that you, like what would maybe the top three things you would point out to them and say, oh, you have to see this. This is a must. Um, yeah, absolutely. So um, must be, I would say, um, you know, you you definitely want to you want to go see the Space Needle. So you want to want to do that, um, and then. So the other things though that I would really recommend that you do is one, um, go to Eastern Washington to our wine country. Mm -hmm. So we are the second largest producer of wine in the US after California. So we have an extensive wine country. So you can do all of the cool things like doing wine tasting, um, you know, but it's actually, it's way less expensive than places like Napa. Mm -hmm. So the pricing is a lot more reasonable. Okay. So definitely do that, definitely do, the Space Needle. Um, you should definitely take the ferry across the Sound to one of the islands. So we have, uh, it's, it's a really cool um, view you get from the ferry going over to the, to the island. So I'd say those are the three things absolutely you have to do. And when you say the island, there's like, there are a lot of islands that are in the Puget Sound area and all throughout, all throughout the area there. I, I usually go up to, just like as an example, I go up to uh, as part of my um, as part of my role uh, working in administration uh, for a college, I oftentimes travel to Whidbey Island, which is one of the islands that are in that general area. Yeah. And has a military base on it, and so I oftentimes go to the military base to check up on one of our outlet locations there. And so, yeah, there's like tons of islands in that yeah. general yeah. vicinity. There's lots of yeah, there's lots of really really beautiful places to go in the sound. 
Um, and it's, yeah, I mean, you, it's really cool to kind of get on the ferry and go across the water. So. Yep, absolutely. So um, what is the government like in your state right now? Yeah, so um, we have uh, Democratic representation in the Senate, the governor's office, um, and most of our most of our House delegation. So it t tends to be a left-leaning state, but that's really only true uh, west of the west of the Cascade. So in Seattle and this area, um, and in the eastern part of the state, tends to have more, much more conservative politics. Okay. Cool. Is the state house reflection of that as well? Um, yes. Although, um, so it wasn't until this last election that uh, there there were actually Democrat majorities in both houses. Because again, uh, the state has been as the Seattle area has gotten bigger, the state has been moving more and more to the left overall. So. Okay. Yeah. What about in terms of resources? What is your state best known for? Yeah, so I would say um, probably best known right now for um, for technology. But uh, in terms of in terms of resource, like when I when I think about um, like what we're known for, uh, so everybody thinks about like Washington apples. <laughs> yeah. So we are the um, we are the biggest producer of. Of, um, of apples, but we also have, um, in terms of in terms of our natural resources, um, we have lots of hydroelectric uh, hydroelectric power. Mm -hmm. So um, the city of Seattle is uh, all of our electricity is, uh, or actually, it's like ninety nine percent, except for some backup power is all um, it's all carbon free. Oh, nice. And uh, yeah, so and one of the other things is that's interesting is um, you know the state is really uh, well known for agriculture because we have because we're far so far north that we have much longer sun days of sunlight like our our day our summer days are much longer than they are let's say in California do so the crops here literally get more sunlight so they. Road. Which is interesting yeah. because people think of, when they think about well, when they think about Washington, they think about it raining all the time, and so yeah. that's yeah. that that is an interesting contrast to that statement. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, so I think um, you know, and then we historically had a very significant um, lumber industry and timber industry that has uh, in the '90s was when that kind of went away. And so, um, so we don't really have, the, it, there is some logging here, but not at the level and scale that it had been historically. Okay, cool. Now, there are some, and you alluded to this when you were talking through the history of uh, Washington, there are some civil rights actions that have happened that originated in Washington, including some um, workers' marches, strikes, some very famous things. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so yeah, there's a there's a long history uh, because uh, the industrialization happened here kind of right at the time that the labor movement was starting as well. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, Seattle had a um, a five day long general strike in 1919, and it literally every industry in the state was or in the city was shut down by uh, by the workers. And for five days, there was no working city government, and there were basically people were just helping each other out to get food and whatever other things they needed. So there's a long uh, history of, of labor movement here. Um, so that that's something that's I, th I think interesting. Um, you know, because we were on the west coast, um, the Japanese Americans who lived here were interned in uh, you know during World War II, which was kind of a, a dark spot in our uh, in our history um, so that, that there are still repercussions of that to this day in terms of families whose crop disease that they've never has never been returned to them um, and then uh, you know I think in more recently when it comes to LGBTQ rights and um, issues like that you know I, we uh, adopted marriage equality um, independently as a state um, before the Supreme Court decision, and uh, you know, in terms of workers' rights, we have very strong um, protections around 
um, minimum wage. So we were uh, the first statewide fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage. Nice. Um, Done. Um, in terms of science, uh, we talked a little bit about technology. Um, are, are there any like biotech firms or anything that are other that, that push yeah. the boundaries of technology in that area? Yeah. So we also have a pretty um, pretty major biotech um, biotech and scientific base here in in Seattle, okay. and then um, another place where uh, that's well known for scientific advancement. Uh, goes for better or worse is on the eastern side of Washington in um, in Han uh, there's a place called the Hanford site which is actually where they refined um, the radioactive materials for the atomic bomb mm. so that's an area that's uh, known for that and then um, as a result of that they built a, a lot of science infrastructure in that area so there's the Pacific Northwest National Labs um, out there, so lots of science happening there as well. And then obviously, uh, I just thought you know, volcanologists obviously being up in the uh, seismic areas around Mount St. Helens, you know, monitoring it for all kinds of activity and stuff that goes on, because it's still considered an active volcano, even the last, even though the last major eruption was. Yeah, we have multiple. Yeah, we have multiple active volcanoes here, so definitely, uh, yeah, we're definitely in a very active. Uh, volcanic area and then the very active seismic area. Yeah. Um, in terms of education though, I know that uh, Washington has a number of wonderful colleges. Um, what about in terms of literacy rate or any K through 12, uh, any challenges that have been coming up over the last couple of years in reference to that? Yeah, I think, I, you know, I, I think uh, like anywhere else, I think there are good and good and bad sides. Uh, to our education system. So, um, yeah, we have a number of, of very highly regarded universities. You think of University of Washington is, uh, you know, a, a top ranked public university. Uh, and then you, we have our literacy rate is like 90.2%, which is sort of middle of the pack in terms of states. Yeah. Um, but, but, the, but the University of Washington is one of the ones right now that's running, uh, I think, uh, COVID, um, like some kind of a COVID uh, counter test or, or review of how to deal with COVID and, and some of the challenges that are dealing with that. Yeah, that, that would make sense. So they have a very, um, they have a very extensive virology department at the University of Washington. So um, yeah, I could definitely see that they would be involved in that. Excellent. Um, what about as far as the healthcare system out there? I think we discussed, there's not a real major player that's in the area, like in California, yeah, like we have a, Pfizer. Yeah, there's, there's not like a single large player here, but we have, again, a number of um, well-regarded hospitals and, and health systems um, that are located here. So I think that, um, it, again, I think, you know, like anywhere, there are certainly um, places where people have difficulty accessing health care, both in urban and rural areas. Yeah. And then f as far as the infrastructure for both telecommunications, internet, things like that, it's, it's pretty standard out in your area, right? Nothing. Yeah, really we, yeah we have pretty, pretty good, um, you know, high speed internet, uh, internet connections in, uh, in the west side of the state. And again, the right to the east side of the state, there's m many more, um, rural it's much more rural so there are areas that that don't have quite as strong of a digital infrastructure uh, and i think the same applies for cellular service you know it's uh, generally good but there are definitely some places up in the mountains or some places out in the extreme rural areas where cellular reception can be a, can be a problem that makes sense. And as far as safety and security, um, this is this is obviously one that some of my students will talk about, especially because of a fear of traveling. They want to make sure where they're going, it's relatively safe, um, that they're not going to be hurt or um, that there's not going to be victims of anything. Um, in terms of major crimes, uh, I, I tend to think of Washington State as a very relatively safe location. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, it's a safe place. Although 
Um, lots of serial killers from Washington. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> She's a mess. Yes. It's it's very safe. Uh, very safe here. You know. Again, we do have a kind of a history of activism here in Seattle. So you know, we're kind of uh, well known protests for, for yeah. protests and uh, shutting down a police precinct and those kinds of things. But yeah. Uh, it's a very safe place. Um, any over the last ten years that you've been there, any type of foreign or domestic terrorism threats that have been like serious enough that you've heard about them? No, no, not that I can think of. Okay, so no one coming over from the Canadian border that's been kind of crazy or anything like that. Okay, yeah. um, and then obviously we talked, we alluded to the fires earlier that are going on right now. Um, yeah. you know that's that is a serious issue. I think that's. I think it's predominantly all up and down the West Coast right now. Um, but it is one of those things that um, I think Washington is uniquely positioned for because they're used to the challenges involving, um, you know, uh, the different forests that, that are in their area. They're, they're used to things like forest fires. They're used to things like uh, large scale fires or challenges that have come with with that type of an infrastructure so uh or not infrastructure but uh the terrain as it were yeah so yeah, yeah. I mean, we have a pretty regular wildfire season here um but most of the smoke that we get on the west side so on the east side in the dry areas they definitely have a lot of wildfires and then here on the west side of the state we mainly because of the way the mountains are positioned uh we sometimes we'll get smoke from California fires, and then other times we get smoke from Canadian fires that blow south. So. Yeah. Well, before we get going, was there any last thoughts, any closing thoughts you wanted to have about Washington? No, it's just, it's a, it's a beautiful place, and it's an amazing place to visit, and a great place to live, so you should come see us. And if you want to see any of his photos, please go follow him on Instagram at Chad Sweeney. Um, again, Chad, thank you so much for doing this. This is such yeah. a great little treat. Um, now, for all my students that are out there, if you have any questions or comments you'd like to direct to me, by all means, please feel free to send me an email at scott at theprofessortravel.com. If you're watching this on YouTube and you'd like to be informed when new videos come out, click the bell icon right above us here. Uh, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. And if you like this video and you want to continue to see this content, give us a like. Um, if you're listening on the podcast, by all means, please rate us, review us. We really appreciate it. But until next time, make every day a travel adventure. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye now.